Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Eh, a nombre del director Mario Alberto Rodríguez Pérez, eh, les presentamos hoy el seminario del Laboratorio de Biotecnología Genómica titulado World Genome Sequence and Analysis Revealed the Genetic Basis for Degradation and Poly of Polycyclic Aromatic Hydrocarbon by Stenotrophomonas SP PEMSOL, el cual será impartido por el doctor Temidayo Luyumi Elfisa. Él es egresado del programa de doctorado en Ciencias en Biotecnología Genómica. Demos de una bienvenida, por favor. Thank you. Thanks for the privilege given to me to come and present part of my research PhD thesis as a seminar series in the, in the center. The title of the presentation, like has been said, is the whole genome sequence and analysis reveal the genetic basis for the hydrocarbon degradation ability of Stentrophomonas species, Stentrophomonas pemso. Stentrophomonas, Stentrophomonas are gram-negative bacteria which are capable of moving either by means of one or more flagella. They are important bacteria because of two things. One, they are really, they have faster time metabolic characteristics. They grow in a, a large variety of substances. They've been isolated from different sources and they have also been known to be wonderful weapons of microbial resistance. And because of their special ability, several studies have been carried out on them, trying to see how they can be managed for applications and how their resistant behavior can be controlled. Now, the story about Nelfumnas began in 1943, when somebody was working with a pharyngea cancer, and they noticed that a prominent bacteria identified from there was but the bacteria called Bacterium bokeri. But when further analysis was done on this bacteria, they realized that the bacteria belonged to the family Pseudomonas. So in 1958, a group of scientists, which is the Hugo and Richenvik, decided to rename the bacteria as Pseudomonas matophilia because they isolated a related bacteria and they identified that these bacteria share a lot of characteristics with Bacterium bokeri and also with Pseudomonas. So they call it Pseudomonas hematophilia. Subsequently, further other scientists worked on this and they isolated other related bacteria which were known to be different species, but because of more analysis, they decided to group them with Pseudomonas hematophilia. And since then, they were able to isolate more bacteria in this category, and presently, we have about 15 species that are related to Pseudomonas matophilia. However, as study continues to go on on this bacteria, they realize that the group, the group of bacteria that they call Pseudomonas matophilia were slightly different from the Pseudomonas family. And they noted that, that about three of them share similarity with Santomonas. So they grouped them as Santomonas but by, in 1981 by Swing et al. But because of the analysis that, that uh, Swing et al. did, there were a lot of controversy. Scientists decided to do more analysis on uh, Santomonas matophilia, and they realized that the, the group, the uh, uh, bacteria are actually different from Santomonas. One of the reasons why they regrouped them was because Santomonas were known to be pathogens of plants, but none of this group were made, were, has been found to be pathogen of land. So they regrouped them, and in 1993, 1993 it was regrouped as Santomonas by Paleroni and Brandberry. And in 1997, the first different species, apart from Matophilia, was identified by Drancourt et al., and he called that species Stentomonas africana because its identity was a bit different from Stentomonas matophilia. So because of that, he renamed them, and since then, several studies have continued on them, and like I said before, 
we have about 15 new species that have been identified. Now, where do we get Stenotrophomonas? Stenotrophomonas, like I said, they, they are metabolically diverse and they've been isolated from different sources. It includes the, the root of plant, they've been isolated from nematode, and they've been isolated from rich, uh, soil rich in contaminants such as iron, such as petroleum, and also they've been isolated from women as opportunistic pathogens. The opportunistic nature of these bacteria to cause infection make them bacteria of particular interest because once they discover them from infections, they, it is noted that they are highly resistant to many antibiotics. Not just that they are resistant to antibiotics, the moment you try to use a new antibiotic with them, they develop a new form of resistance. And so because of that, scientists have continued to study more on this bacteria in order to be able to know the mechanism by which they, they develop resistance and also how they can be managed because they are as well important bacteria because of their metabolic diversity. Now, looking at Stenophomonas as it is, I told us that they are metabolically diverse. And because of their diversity, they grow in different environments. They could be wonderful tools for bioremediation in contaminated environments. However, it is important that we understand the mechanism involved. And as a result of that, we decided to do to isolate Stenophomonas, knowing that these bacteria have been identified, have been isolated from different environments showing different characteristics, which means they have adaptations that are associated with their environment, in which make them good tools for management of different environments. However, a good understanding of the way they evolved or the way they developed their characteristics would be useful to be able to manipulate them for biotechnological usage. So as a result of this, it would be nice to isolate Stentrumnus species from environment, a unique environment, and it will be more, it will be easier to understand, to know more about them by doing a genomic characterization of the isolate. So we decided to do, to carry out a study isolating Stentrumnus species from a crude contaminated soil with the hypothesis that environmental adaptation can influence adaptive characteristics, and also that complete genome sequencing can give us insight into how Centrifumonas have evolved their adaptation to the environment where they are found, and how we can use this adaptation to manipulate them for beneficial or biotechnological purposes. The focus, the aim of this study is that we want to isolate a Centrifumonas species that can grow in poly polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, and also, we want to understand how it is able to do this by doing complete genome sequence analysis. Now, the first, the specific species, the specific objective of this study are to identify centrifugal species, at least one, that could grow from a, in, a, in a contaminated environment to see its capability to grow in different polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon and also to understand the mechanism involved by doing complete genome sequence analysis. <clears throat> now, the method employed for this study is divided into two. The method that is involved in the isolation and, ident and identification of the PA degradating ability, and also the method that has to do with the genomic analysis. Now, I'm going to be talking first about the isolation and the capability to grow in pH and the, what we notice about the, its activity on poly, PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. Now, we isolated Sandifumonas using a method we call enrichment technique. How did we do this? We went to a soil contaminated with a, a crude, oil, crude oil, and we transfer small portion of this soil into a luria broth. So that, why we did this is because we want to make sure that there's a better chance for Stentrophomonas to grow. Because sometimes, if we grow, play them directly on selective medium, because it could be minimal in quantity, it may be difficult to recover them. So we did an enrichment technique, after which we, did, we carried out a serial dilution 
and then transfer the diluent into a selective medium called stentifunas, vancomycin, imipenim, and futericin agar. This agar, this was plated on selective medium, on this selective medium, and then incubated at 30 degrees because of the environmental temperature. Now, after two, 48 hours, colony that appeared on the plate were further worked on. Now, following the, following the I, 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 identification of colonies on plates, we did by chemical characterization as described by, <coughs> as, as described according to the uh, Badges Manual, the Cardinative Microbiology. And also, we do molecular characterization by using a primer we designed in the lab to amplify the 16S fragment of the stenotrophomonas uh, genome. Now, to know if stenotrophomonas could grow <coughs> could grow on a uh, hydrocarbon. What we did was to get a minimal medium using at least one hydrocarbon as one polycyclic hydrocarbon. In this case, we use naphthalene as the, the carbon source. So when we use that as a carbon source, we check for the growth of sensitomonas. This was done both on solid media and on liquid media. And the growth which we, we noticed were further evaluated to see if, there's, if, if there is an, a, a degradation that has taken place by the growth of Centrifumina species. Now, also, having seen that Centrifumina could grow, or the, this isolate could grow on, on the hydrocarbon, we, further, we went ahead to see if the, the, what mechanism is involved in the degradation of hydrocarbon by using by checking for its sub suboxone production. Why? Because it has been said that some bacteria use suboxone as a mechanism through which they make hydrocarbon available for them to be able to use. So we decided to check if this strain, particular strain, is able to produce suboxone by using the method described by <coughs> Singh et al. in 2015. Now. We also analyzed, following the growth, we did, we tried to identify the content of, that is performed from the degradation of pH by stentifomonas using FTIR, GCMS, and UPS analysis of the naphthalene products. <coughs> now, results. Now, based on the isolation and the characterization and the ability of stentifomonas to, this asset to grow, on PAH, we identified that the isolate that we obtained is catalase positive, oxygen negative, fructose positive, lactose negative, trialose positive, negative for manitol production, and positive for esquiline production. Now, comparing these characteristics, we, we noted that this is peculiar for stentrophomonas species, and it, it's, it's possible that our strain is like it's a member of the Stentifumonas family. Now, having done this, we went further to, to sequence the 16S fragment which we amplified, and we used the sequence to draw a phylogenetic tree so that we could compare, <coughs> so that we can compare its relatedness with other strains. And from this tree, we could see that this tree share it cluster closely with Stentifumonas species, and it's which confirmed that. Stentrophomonas pemso is a member of the Stentrophomonas. Now, having done that, we try to check to do to quantify the growth of the isolate <coughs> by do, by checking it on by checking the optimal density of the isolate over time as we grow them continuously for a specific period of time. And we did first for different PAH, which are phenantrine and tracine. Um, Bifenide, naphthalene, and uh, antroquinone. And also, we checked for emis. And we, it, it, we noted that the isolate grew effectively in all of the PAH that we, stud, that we studied. Now, following, following the, its growth, then we tried to check, we continue to do further degradation study by growing these isolates 
Furthermore, in a different, in a separate experiment for another 20 days to see what is going to be outcome of its growth on a pH supplemented medium. And having done this, we did FTR IR analysis <coughs> of the isolate. And we realized that compared to compared to naphthalene that is up, which, which has no, no bacteria, the isolate was able to generate new peaks after the 15 days, showing that there's a possibility of new product form due to the growth of Centrifumal species PEMSO in the PAA in naphthalene. And on the 30th day, we noticed that there's a total change in the hydrocarbon structure, which shows that there's a possibility of complete degradation or the formation of a new metabolite due to the growth of, <coughs> I'm sorry, due to the growth of PEMSO or naphthalene. Similarly, we try to do a GCMS analysis of the, of the metabolite, and we compare the, the, the upper part shows the image for naphthalene, the, the peak for naphthalene, and this shows the peak formed as sort of the growth of, of PEMSO in, the, in naphthalene. We noted that there's a rupture in the peak of naphthalene, which disappeared in this part, which shows that Centrifumonas PEMSO was able to completely degrade naphthalene compared with the control in which there's no bacteria. Now, following this, like I said, we want to know if there's any other mechanism used by Centrifumonas species for the degradation of, degradation of hydrocarbon. We noted that PEMSO compared with other Centrifumonas strains that produce biosorbitants uh, it, 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 in hydrocarbon. PEMSO did not produce bisulfatant in hydrocarbon, and as a result, may not be using this mechanism as one of its methods for surviving and degrading hydrocarbon. Now, what do we note from this? We know that PEMSO, we are selling PEMSO from contaminated soil, and it was able to grow effectively in, PA, in PAH. It, the, its biochemical characteristics also shows that PEMSO is a member of the genus Centrifumonas, and its molecular, uh, I, molecular identification confirms PEMSO to be a member of that genus. Now, all genome sequencing and analysis. Now, because PEMSO was able to grow on PAH, it is important to understand the mechanism, the underlying molecular mechanism involved. So, because of that, we decided to do a whole genome sequencing, and we extract the genomic DNA using the Promega de genomic DNA kit, and using the protocol described by the manufacturer. Following this, we do a complete genome sequencing using the Enumina genome sequencing methods. Annotation and genome assembly was done using spade and felvet, and the quality of assembly was assessed by using quast. Now, following the assembly, the genome was annotated using PROCA, and the annotation was subject to further analysis, which include the prediction of the autologous gene clusters, the prediction of genomic island, and the prediction of the two-component system, as well as pancon genome analysis and the gene order. Now, the pancon genome analysis was done so as for us to be able to identify genes that are unique to PEMSO and be able to relate these genes with its adaptation or its function, which is degradation of hydrocarbon. Now, we also try to check the similarity of PEMSO with all the strains by doing average nucleotide identity match and also genome to genome distance calculation. Now, based on this, this represents the circular genome map of PEMSO and this shows the genomic DNA that were found in PEMSO. Based on this, we are able to identify 35 genomic island, and some of which contains the genes in PEMSO that are associated with hydrocarbon degradation. Now, also, like I said, we did, we used the uh, pan genome analysis to predict the unique genes that are present in PEMSO, and we were able to identify 
135 unique genes that are present in PEMSO, and we have almost all, some of them that are involved in the degradation of hydrocarbon. Some of these genes are also present in the, in the, in, in the genomic island. Also, now, from we of particular interest were these three genes found in PEMSO, which are like R, SDR, and GST, as well as integrase. <coughs> These genes found in PEMSO were found, have been identified to be associated with hydrocarbon degradation. And when we compare PEMSO with all the centrina species, Matophilia, Chilatifaga, all other, the, all other species that have been reported, we noted that these genes were only, associated, are, are only present in PEMSO, and as a result, we believe it's one of the mechanisms it's, it's using for the degradation of one of the genes that are associated in, in PEMSO for the degradation of hydrocarbons. Now, we also know that the PEMSO has 65 uh, the two component system. What is the importance of this? Signaling pathway is an essential factor through which the bacteria were, were able to sense and move towards or away from harmful substances and also help them in their response to, in their ability to degrade hydrocarbon. It has been reported that some of the, some of the, some of the signals, signal pathways in bacteria are involved in the breakdown, particularly the two component system are involved in the utilization of hydrocarbon. So the presence of this in, in PEMSO shows one of the properties it possesses through which it's able to degrade and grow in a crude oil contaminated soil. Now, <coughs> Going to the average nuclear identity, the average nuclear identity match of PEMSO with all the centrifugal strain shows that PEMSO is likely a new species. Why? Because it is said that for two bacteria to be the same, they must have a, an average nuclear identity that is about 98%, between 98 95 to 98% similarity. 100% slightly. But however, for PEMSO and other bacteria compared, we have less than 90%. So which shows that the PEMSO is likely a new strain. This is also confirmed by the GGDH, General to Genome Distance Calculator, which is far way beyond the threshold, which is the... Thank you. We are far way beyond the 70% threshold, below the 70% threshold for which two bacteria can be classified as the same species. So we believe that PEMSO is likely a new species. Now, in, in conclusion, following the analysis of the autologous clusters in PEMSO, we found out that there were 19 code categories which PEMSO share with others in the Fumna species, and 14% of the code we are able to do for annotation for 14% of the code category. Now, we, the metabolic pathway refute that it has higher gene associated with signal transduction, and, it may be, and like I said, this may be due for it, its need to adjust or readjust to the changes in its environment. Now, the pan genome analysis of PEMSO so shows that there's a there's lateral gene transfer because of the number of unique genes it possesses. And like I showed in the other, image, the other diagram, you will notice that the, the genes that are unique to PEMSO came from another bacteria, and the bacteria is called Lyxobacter, Lyxo, Lyxobacter, belongs to genus Lyxobacter. Now, the, also, the genomic island in PEMSO confirmed presence of lateral gene transfer, like I said before. Two common system in, but in Sandifunas confirm its relation with relationship with its, adapt, with its adaptation to its environment. Now, we also found in PEMSO an adaptive provage, which is essential, which we noted that, it, that it's an oxidoreductase. Oxidoreductase enzyme is one of the enzymes that is needed by the bacteria for the degradation of hydrocarbon. So maybe this profage in PEMSO is assisting it for the degradation of PAH. 
Now, like I said, the complete GDDH and average nuclear identity show that Centrifugal sperm cell is likely to be a novel species. Now, the photogenome analysis shows that it has about 60% genome function for signal transduction. And the keg, keg mapping of the genome shows that there were 32 genes that were directly involved with the degradation of hydro, PAH, and other xenobiotics. Now, like I said, Stendifuminous sperm cell has this profage, uh, which is from staph, and it is an oxido reductase profage, which can help Stendifuminous in the degradation of PAH. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Agradecemos al doctor Temidayo. Eh, iniciamos con la sesión de preguntas. Chicos, ¿alguna pregunta? Bueno, siendo así, eh, agradecemos al doctor Temidayo este, y damos por terminado el seminario del día de hoy. Gracias.